Hi guys, welcome to our video. Olivia and I have produced a trailer in which highlights the idea of guilt and how guilt was represented through different characters, motifs, scenes, and quotes. Although Shakespeare's never directly suggested guilt amongst his characters in the play, it was evident through different devices. As the video starts, we would like you to sort of pick it out into pieces a bit and try to recognize scenes and why we chose them before we sort of analyze it for you. So, yeah, enjoy! Hear it not, Duncan, but is a knell that summons thee to heaven. Say God bless us. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves will never tremble. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? As the trailer opens, we decided the first scene to be the scene in which Macbeth has made the final decision to kill Duncan. The quote, Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell, basically states that the act in which Macbeth will murder Duncan will either summon him to heaven or to hell. This contradicts the idea of guilt and how instead Macbeth is overwhelmed with greed. Macbeth yet doesn't understand the consequences he will suffer. This was the thought process that caused the turning point of Macbeth's life and everyone around him, most importantly Lady Macbeth, and how she was overwhelmed with the consequences of Macbeth's decision. After the murder of Duncan and Banquo, many events take place that suggest guilt towards Macbeth. One of the main scenes we chose from the movie is a banquet scene where Banquo's murder has overwhelmed Macbeth with guilt and has caused hallucinations. There are multiple factors that are involved in this scene to represent guilt. The symbol of blood appears throughout the entire play to represent guilt in one form or another. In this case, the blood is smeared on Banquo's shirt to show where the guilt has come from. When the scene is closely viewed, the only color that stands out is the color red, the color of blood. Lady Macbeth's dress is red to show her involvement in the murder of Duncan and to foreshadow her guilt. The spilling of the red wine to foreshadow more blood shed later in the play. And lastly, the blood on Banquo's shirt to show where the guilt has come from and how Macbeth is having hallucinations because of the murder. The scene also highlights an important factor of the play which shows up multiple times, hallucinations. In this case, Macbeth is so overridden with guilt that he begins to hallucinate of Duncan. Here, Duncan is pointing to Macbeth to directly blame him for the murder. Although the hallucination of Duncan isn't real, Macbeth will always be reminded of how the murder was. Shakespeare has used the scene to show that that the guilt will never leave him and how he will forever take responsibility. This scene came from Macbeth's soliloquy with the dagger before the murder of Duncan. In this movie, the dagger is seen to be invisible, which makes the audience know that Macbeth is hallucinating. Macbeth's movements are forceful and full of desire, his expression growing angry as he fails to reach for the dagger. Like the beginning, this scene is to show how Macbeth can't differentiate from reality and how he's now overcome with greed. Macbeth now doesn't realize the consequences he will suffer. The dagger is also covered in blood, proven in Act 2, Scene 1, Line 47, where Macbeth says, And on thy blade and dungeon's gowns of blood. As said before, blood is to be re represented as guilt throughout the entire play. In this case, the blood on the dagger represents how that whoever stabs Duncan and covers the blade with blood will be the one who suffers with guilt. 
In this very short clip, the daggers are shown to be covered with blood to represent that the deed is done and that Macbeth is not guilty. In this scene, Lady Macbeth takes the bloody daggers from Macbeth as he strayed from the original plan, and she decides to do it herself. As she grabs the daggers from him, this is shown to be that the guilt has spread to her, because although she hasn't murdered Duncan herself, she later suffers from the same insanity and guilt and ends up committing suicide because of it. In this part of the trailer, there is a fast alternation between Lady Macbeth early in the play and Lady Macbeth later in the play. The clips were edited this way to show the two different personalities and how guilt has driven Lady Macbeth from common greedy to completely hysterical. Arms has murdered sleep, therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. In this play, sleep is a symbol of serenity and a peaceful state of mind, but after the death of Duncan, Macbeth is now haunted by the visions of his actions. This is established in Act 2, Scene 2, where Macbeth exclaims, Sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up in the raveled sleeve of care. This quote demonstrates Macbeth's loss of innocence and peace. From this moment on, he is no longer in a restful state of mind, and this clip shows that Macbeth is panicked and suffering from the guilt of Duncan's murder. Likewise, Lady Macbeth is suffering from vivid hallucinations, which can be seen in this clip. At this point, Lady Macbeth has become hysterical from the guilt since she's envisioning blood from the tap. As blood is the symbol of guilt, Shakespeare has demonstrated in this scene that although she's attempting to wash her impure hands, she can't do so because the tap is running blood. Her hands are a representation of the state of mind since no matter how much she'll try to clean them, it'll never wash away the guilt and be as it was before Duncan was murdered. We've chosen to do a trailer because it was an effective way to present snippets from the play in a visual manner. Essentially, William Shakespeare wrote this for King James because Shakespeare wanted to make a lasting impression for the king. King James was also interested in witchcraft and magic. With this, Shakespeare used these supernatural factors to build a story to almost warn everyone that if the king is murdered, the murderers will suffer major consequences of guilt like Macbeth and Lady Macbeth did. Guilt has been numerously shown throughout the play by both main characters. Multiple elements were shown to demonstrate this repetitive idea of guilt through symbols, the occurrence of hallucinations, and character tone and expression. As the play progresses, it's evident that the characters' personalities are shifted after the murder of Duncan, and both characters have an untimely fate, which was purely driven by the guilt they suffered. Thanks for watching!